Hey guys, how you doing? It's Michael Kabisky. And I'm coming at you live from our studio. Um, this is kind of a different day today. Um, kind of by myself. But it's alright. God is here too. Um, alright, well, today I'm gonna start off of, with a little bit of stuff just for now um i just want to wish a happy birthday to one of our our um members of contagious ministry that is laura towner i just want to wish her a happy birthday and um that's where she is today um she's pro i think she's celebrating with um gabriel today so um that's where they are and I'm here to preach the word to you guys. And just want to let you, remind you guys of the autographed Seahawks football. Yes, this is the exact one I'll be sending to you in the mail. If you sign up and you win. Uh, that's if. Um, so just go to our Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com slash contagious M-I-M. And you can sign up for there. You'll see a little tab that says enter to win. I believe that's what it says. Fill it out there and give us your name and your address. And um, yeah, you can win. The only reason why we need your address is just to send it to you if you win. And we do not sell your information at all to anybody because I don't believe in that. That's, that'd be stealing, so. Another thing is, oh, sorry about the commercials. Um, yeah, today we don't have a regular audio type thing, so I had to improvise. <laughs> but um, yeah, shop at that place if you want to. I'm not advertising it. Somebody else is. I um, also want to elaborate on my mom's book. It's an awesome book. This is her uh, life story. Um, her testimony that God gave her and um, yeah just check this out and uh, it's on Amazon Kindle it's on uh, Nook now um, you can get it in print on Amazon.com BarnesandNoble.com uh, xlibris.com that's x-l-i-b-r-i-s I guess dot com um, just do a Google search. Type in Carolyn Kabisky. Um, yeah. So, all right. I believe I'm going to get into the Word right now. Um, I'm going to pray. Pray before we start. Dear God, I thank you for this day that you have given us, Father. Thank you for this night, Father God. I don't know things are a little different here tonight, God, but that doesn't matter, God, because you're here, Father God. And you will never leave us or forsake us, Father God. God, I'm praying you from your anointing, God. From my head to my toes, God. Lord God, let these be the words that you want to give to the people, Father God. Not from what was in my brain or anything, God. God, but these were the words that you wanted me to share with the, with the public, God, with the church, with the people, God, with the non-believers, God. God, I pray for your anointing upon me, God, as I speak, Lord. I pray, God, that this is not a message, God, of just hearing, God, having head knowledge, God, but this is a message of heart knowledge, God. God, that this people will act on this message, God. They need to so much act on this message, I believe, Father God, that you've given to me to speak for. I pray for your anointing today, Father God. In your name, Lord, you're welcome in this place, God. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And God, I thank you for what you're going to do, God. In your name, Father. 
Thank you, Father. All right, so I just want to mention to you guys that, you know, this live stream is not just a live stream. Um, it's just not a live stream. It's just not another church service, I believe, I feel, I know. It is not just another church service. These messages that God has given me, given to me to tell you, I don't I, you're not going to find them in another, you're not going to find them in a, in a church. You probably will not find these, this mess, these messages in a church. Because there is something great, it's something better that God is doing. And I believe that God, God has came, oh, God has given me the heart and the vision to help spark and stir the church of America, the church of the world. And this is something totally different than what people are doing inside of churches. They're not letting the Holy Spirit be guided. They're not letting the Holy Spirit be guided through their messages. They're just doing it off the Bible, what they feel like it, off of a, maybe off of another person's sermon. But this is something different. This is the, what the Holy Spirit gave me to say to you, to gave to say to the church. This is a message from the Holy Spirit. Here at Contagious Ministries, we do not put the Holy Spirit in a spiritual closet at all. We don't. We allow the Holy Spirit to move, the Holy Spirit to have his way, the Holy Spirit to do what he wants. The Holy Spirit can have his way no matter what. This can go all along for half an hour. This can go on for maybe an hour or whatever, maybe all night. We don't know. It's all up to the Holy Spirit. It's all what he wants to do. And we will allow him to do it. And I will allow him to do it. He is not stuffed in a closet. No. He is fully busting out. And you know what, friends? <laughs> God gave me that to tell you guys today. And this is not even part of my sermon. <laughs> but um, today I'm going to preach to you today on near vision. How many of you wear um, glasses that are nearsighted? Um, you can raise your hand. Well, I can't see it. <laughs> this is, uh, well, thank you, Heather. I guess you do. <laughs> um. You can, you can see things up close, and you can't see things far uh, far away as much. Um, but um, how many are of you uh, are uh, nearsighted? You can see things up close. Oh, I'm sorry. With, <laughs> with farsighted, you can see things far away. But you can't see them as close as much. Um, how many are your near side where you can see things near, but you can't see things far away as much? Um, and that's kind of what these glasses are. They are um, near sighted glasses. Um, just as an example, um, the reading glasses. Whew. You know what? We as a church. As the church, we have a mindset that what it is, it's that we just need to help kids across the country, around just around the world, in other countries. And, um, you know, we don't help, unfortunately, we do not help necessarily the kids that are, own, are the people that are in our own backyard. Just like, just basically, we don't. We don't have a spiritual nearsighted. We do we have too much of a spiritual farsighted. And um, you know when we see a homeless person on the side of the street and we ignore them, 
We just walked by them, acting like if they weren't even there. If a ba beggar really asks for money, you know what? Um, we just think that all they want to do is for booze and uh, drugs, maybe. And so we just prejudge them before we even get to know their heart. The fact is, uh, we are called to have nearsighted vision and see what's right in front of our own eyes, friends, before we see the rest of the world. We need to go back. We need to go into our own backyard and help the hurting and lost and invest the lives of other people. The people that are right in our own faces. You know, I, yes, I understand there are people hurting across the world, friends. I can understand that. But I get that. I get that. What You know, I get that what's going on to help the poor. But we need to go into our own backyard. We're called to be the good Samaritan, friends. We are called to be the good Samaritan to our own neighbors. Right where we live, friends. Luke, um, I'm going to read to you from Luke um, 10.25. Um, this is a story about the Good Samaritan. This is a parable. Um, this is from the NIV. I mean, it's taken out of the NIV. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. As he clearly, as he answered correctly, Jesus replied, Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. You see this? A priest, a religious person, passed by him. That's ridiculous, friends. That's what religion does. They just pass by. They just pass by people. And... All right. Going off. Sorry, I'm trying to find out where it was. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where he was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and begged. He went to him and bandaged, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, which were the coins back then, and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you. For any extra expense you may have. Verse 36 says, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, 
Go and do likewise. You see, friends, we are supposed to be taking care of the people who are hurting. We are supposed to take care of the homeless. We are supposed to treat others with respect and loyalty, friends. And not just pass them by and judge them, friends. The fact is that we are all people. We are all related. We all have different color of skin, but that doesn't matter. We all have feelings. We all need a place to live. We all want love. We all need God. Uh, friends, what if God was disguised as a homeless person and we passed him by every day? And you know, what, what would he think or say about us? Would we let him inside of our church? Would we? I know that there's some places that probably don't let homeless people inside their churches. Because they stink or something. That doesn't matter. We're all people, friends. We all need God. Some people think that they'll get made... Maybe some people think they may get fun of because of... And persecuted you for because of their faith and because of what because of what they uh, that they don't act, because they want to act on their faith but they feel that they'll get persecuted for it um, Genesis is, I'm going to read from Genesis 6 starting from verse 5 The Lord saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuity. And the Lord regret, regretted that he had made man on earth. You get that? He regretted that he made man. And it grieved his heart. It grieved him to his heart. Friends, here's a question. Here's a very good question. Does the evil that we are doing on the face of this planet today, does he regret of making man? Possibly, friends. It's grieving his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man who have I created from the face of the land, men and animals and creeping things and the birds of heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. Wow. Wow. That is God right there. He, he, man. And continued on. This is about Noah. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Maybe you've heard this story so much when you were in, um, when you were little. But you, you thought it was just a cute little story, friends. No, 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 no. It, it, no, it, it is not just a cute little story, friends. It, it meant a lot. It means a lot. This is about Noah and the flood. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence, just like it is today, friends. And God saw the earth and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupt their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make the end of all flesh, 
for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will just behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourselves an ark of gopher wood. Gopher wood. Really, gopher wood? <laughs> Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. It's breadth, 50 cubits. It's height, 30 cubits. Cubits. Make a roof of the ark and finish it to a cubic above. And set the door on the ark in it in its side make it with a low make it with lower second and third decks for behold i will bring a flood upon the waters i will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which the breath of life under heaven everything that is on the earth shall die but i will establish my covenant with you and you will shall come into the ark, your sons, your wife, your sons, wives with you. And everything of all flesh, you will shall you shall bring every sort into the ark, keeping them alive with you. There shall be male and female. Talking about the animals. Of the birds according to their kinds and of all the animals according to their kinds of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind two of every sort shall come to you to keep them alive also take with you every sort of food that was eaten and stored up it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Friends, God told Noah to build an ark. And he was persecuted, persecuted for his faith. For what he was doing for God. But you know what? And when we do the right things, God's favor surrounded, surrounds us like a shield. Noah was doing what God asked him to do. He was a righteous man. He was a right doer. Hallelujah. When God... <laughs> Sorry for the after rush. Hallelujah. When Noah did the right thing. He felt God's favor on him that he can ignore all the persecution and the laughing. God's favor covered him like a shield. When you're doing what's right, God's smile covers you up, friends. Have you ever been in a position where you needed help at all? Yeah. I know that I have. Trying to get a jump start from my car sometimes, maybe. And no one would help. People just passing by, just looking. Like, what the heck is going on? What do you need? <laughs> and not, I don't know. And, you know, people in society is not like how it used to be, friends. Not at all. We are living in the last days. People are becoming more lovers of themselves and lovers of money. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, Three, one through five. There will be godliness in the last days. But understand this, that in the last days there will become times of difficulty for people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unacceptable, unpleasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, 
treacherous, re reckless, swollen with consent, lovers of pleasure, then lovers of God, having an appearance of godliness, but denying his power. Woo! Avoid such people, friends. Basically, we are living in the last days like Noah was. Homosexuality is the norm. And other forms of sin and evil as well are normal now. Church, it's time that we put ourselves in the shoes of the people who are hurting. How would you like it if you were homeless, friends? How would you like it if you were homeless and people treated you like dirt? And they said that you were worthless. What would, what would you do for clothes? What would you do for shelter? Church, it's time that we have a heart for the hurting and a heart for the lost. Stop being a church of consumers and become a church that is Christ-like. Go and help the hurting and be like Christ and do his work and become selfless. James 2.14 says, Without faith without works is dead. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace and be warmed and filled without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? So also by faith itself, it does not have works. If it doesn't have works, it's dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is, you believe that God is one? You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do not be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works. And faith was completed by his works. And the scripture uh, was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. That is the same way also Rahab, the prostitute, prostitute justified her by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so is faith apart from works is dead. It's time that we stop looking at what is right. It's time that we start, start looking what is right in front of our own eyes, friends. And stop being distracted by the things of the world that blind our near vision. It's time that we see the big picture and realize that people are just hurting and hungry overseas. But in that they that they are, but that as well as in our neighborhoods as well. It's time that we we have near vision, friends. Near vision. And then God will give us the far vision, far sighted vision as well. It's time that we do something in, something for God in our own neighborhood.
why I... Hmm. And that's why Contagious Ministries does what it does. We go down to Occidental Park and we feed the homeless. We help clothe them. We give, God, we give God's message to them. And we need your help. We want you to help us. We want you to help us to be a part of Contagious Ministries. To do that as well. You can, um, you can text us if you'd like to help. You can email us. You can shoot us a message on Facebook. Maybe on our wall. On to Texas. You can text us at 509-569-7309. We'll get that text. We'll respond to you. Um, you can drop me an email at Michael Kabiski. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-K-U-B-I-S-K-Y at ContagiousM.com. Um, shoot me an email there. Um, yeah, uh, we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. at Occidental Park. Uh, all right, need your help. But before I pray for, I'm gonna pray for others. But before I pray, um, before I pray for others, I'm gonna pray for about this message about. For this message and for others as well. Lord, I thank you for this is this message and this word that you have given me to tell others, others, God. God, thank you for this this message that you've given me to tell the church. God. This is another message, God, not just for for. Our, just for us to listen to God but God that we put it in our hearts and we put it to practice Father God and that we don't care about the persecution that may come our way may come our way God make us more like Noah Father God make us more like Noah God let us do what you want for our lives Father God And God, I, I'm praying, God, for the people out there, God. If they have not heard, if they're just listening to this, just to listen to this, and they've never known God, God, I'm praying for them, Lord. I'm praying for them, God, that they would come to know you, God. If there is anyone out there of the sound of my voice who has never heard the name of Jesus, who has never accepted Jesus to come inside their heart and they're stirred by this message God I pray to God that they respond God either by text by email or by, or by message God God I thank you for them God if you if you're if you're not a if you're not a Christian just repeat after me for this Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I need your help, God. I want to know you, God. I want you to come in my heart and make me whole. Make me a new person in you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a new spirit, God. Holy Spirit, come inside my heart and fill me up, God. Fill me with your presence, Lord. Fill me with your joy, your peace, and your happiness, God. Thank you, Lord. God, I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again three days later. And that you are coming again. Help me to surround myself with other Christians. Help other Christians come to come my way so that they may disciple me. Lord, I, I thank you. I 
Thank you. Thank you for making me. So friends, if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you so much to connect with us, to c contact us, and we'll get you connected with other people. This is a message, God. Just this is a message for people, not just to not just to to listen to it and have it inside their head. But this is a message that people need to act on. Contagious Ministries does this not just to, like I said, not just for, not just for us, not for us at all, but we do this for God. We do this for God because God has called us to. And these messages are not messages, like I said before, that you will hear inside of a church. Because these churches do not put the Holy Spirit inside of their churches. They are more man-made. They are more man-focused. Man but, friends, I encourage you just to act on Act on this message. So, all right, friends. So, if um, so, all right, we're gonna um, we're gonna pray for some people. Uh, here's my wife, Heather, alongside me. Um, to pray. <laughs> uh, to pray for some people and um if you have any prayer requests at any time friends any time during the week we're more we're open for that we have a text number you can text us to it's our prayer text line um it's uh 509 569 7309 text us there any day any time of the week um, or you can email me as well. We also need um, we also need people as prayer warriors. Um, I believe I'm pretty sure we're probably going to set up a a prayer ministry for people to help pray for other people and as well as for the ministry as well. And we want you to be a part of that. We'll let you know more about that. But um. All right, Heather, start us off. All right. <clears throat> God, we're coming to you um, uh, praying for uh, Nancy as she uh, has sprained her ankle and she has two small children. And God, she just needs a, uh, a healing of that foot and it, yes. she will be able to walk on it and be able to um, do what she needs to do on a daily basis. And, yes, God. Um, I know as a mother, yes, it's God. very difficult when you get injured and you go down, but God, you just touch her and um, you perform America's healing in that foot. Yes. Yes. God, I'm praying for um, a woman <coughs> at our church, um, the church we attend as well, Father God. Her name is Brandy Doll Dollarhide. God, I'm praying for her. God, that her, that her child, um, her child uh, being born, God, that the doctors will know what they're doing correctly, Father God. And God, that the delivery will be smooth, pro uh, smooth, prosperous, God, as she's already having contractions, God. God, let this baby be, the baby that she's having, let it be healthy. And let it be a beautiful baby boy, which it is, Father God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I pray for your hand in that. Thank you. God, I bring Sally to you, and um, she's been dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety and uh, just feelings of guiltiness. And God, none of that comes from you. And I just pray that you just yes. take that away, God. Yes, and, Lord. Um, 
by the power of Jesus' name, Satan, yes. you are no longer. Yes. Um, you don't have power over Sally anymore, God. And I pray you, God, you just you just take them away. Satan, you go say, back to where you belong. You say we call upon your name. Satan must flee, and he will. God, and I just pray you give Sally a peace tonight, and yes, give so. her, you know, just an increasing uh, feeling of your love and your power, and your just your acceptance um, to you. God, I'm praying for a man. Um, I'm praying for a, a man's family, Jr. I believe that last week he, Jr. passed away. And he died from a sudden heart attack all of a sudden. God, I'm praying for comfort for that family, Father God. That you just comfort that family, God. That you put your arms around that family, God. You just hold them, God. God, if it's just a sudden thing, God. You said, God, that life is like a mist. That we are here and that we are gone, Father. God, I pray for comfort in that family, Father. God, that you just hold them, God. Touch them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Thank you. God, I bring uh, Katrina Ferris to you, God, and she's having dental surgery or did have dental surgery, God. I pray you just, um, just, you know, guide the doctors, the dentists, uh, guide everybody involved, the anesthesiologist who was a, a severe procedure, God, and you just give her healing and give yes. her parents just a peace to know everything will be okay and that you're going with Katrina through this entire situation and them. God, and I'm praying for, Lord, I'm praying for the co our co-revivalist's wedding, Father God. Him and his fiance, Lord, Father. Mm. God, I'm praying, God, your favor will be upon them, Lord God. I'm praying for this wedding, God. I'm praying that, Lord, that you just comfort them, Father God. You just comfort them during this time, Lord. That you just help them, God. Help them know, God, that this is your will, Father God. Help them that, to know that you are there during this time, God. And maybe sometimes the money situation, God, is difficult, God. And you know that, God. You know that situation, God. God, I pray for your blessings upon it, Father God. And I pray that this wedding will go smoothly, Father God. Thank you, Father God. God, just even to add to that, um, starting from this moment forward, pray that you just give everybody involved, especially Gabriel and Laura, a peace and yes. help them stop and realize that you have every detail under control. Now, you know, there's... A, the week before the wedding is like the most stressful and the most trying time on everybody involved. And I pray you just give them that peace and that understanding yes. that you've got this under control. They're doing what you have called them to do. No matter what anybody says, this is your will for their life. And they help them remember they've got people standing behind them. They've got you most importantly. And help you to start, even now, help them... Keep you in the center of their relationship. And put no one in front of that, God, because with you in the center, nothing can ever fail. God, I'm praying for the mystery, Father God, as well, God. I'm praying that more doors will open, God, for this for the mystery that you've given, given us, Father God. God, I, I know that right now it may be, God, that it seems like it's a dry spell, Father God. But God, I know that you have called us to do great things for you, Father God. I know you've called us to do great things for you, God. And we will not give up, Father God. 
God, we want to do your will, what you have called us to do, Father God. God, bless us so we can bless others, Father God. Help us, God. Strengthen us as a team, Father Moore, Father God. Pour out your spirit in us, Father God. Fill us up with your presence, Father God. Mm. Stir our hearts, God, so we can help stir the church, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, I, um, I bring to you uh, Blue River, Oregon. Um, you know the situation. There's a massive accident with 17 or more emergency vehicles at the scene. God, and you pray you just bless, wow. be with everybody that's yes, in that situation. Mm. We don't know what's going on. We don't Gosh. know what the injuries are or the fatalities. But there, if there are fatalities, I pray that those people are with you now. Yes. And that you will comfort the families. You will help. Everybody involved, you help those emergency personnel, the firefighters, the police, and the paramedics to do what needs to be done to help everybody involved and just yes. put your hand upon that situation and whatever is going on there. God, and I pray for the families of that, Father God. The families, <coughs> maybe, God, that the, the people have passed away in that, Father God. I pray for your comfort upon them, Lord. God, you comfort them, surround them, God, with your peace and your presence, God. Touch them, Lord. Do I feel seamless singing in honor and glory and power forever? Do I feel singing blessing in honor and glory and power? Forever to our God, blessing in honor and glory in power. Forever to our God. God, and I give all these prayer requests to you, Father God. I thank you, God. You know the hearts of every one of those people, Father God. God, thank you for them, God. Thank you for my brothers and my sister who are watching this, God. God, that you just touch their heart, God. That you spark a new, a new awakening in their life, God. That you fill them with your Holy Spirit this week, Father God. That every day, God, that they, that they just thank you for making them, Father God. God, to God, you said, Behold, I am doing a new thing. And God, I pray for a new thing to be done in these people's lives. Thank you, Father. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, God. Stir us up inside, Father, as we go this week, God. As we go. Today, from this message, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to uh, say a couple things before I leave. And, um, couple things are we actually will unfortunately we will not be doing live stream service um, this Sunday night um, there are things that we are actually doing that are going on but Thanks we so will be doing actually a live stream on Wednesday night actually um, so be prepared for that um, Wednesday night probably probably about the same time um, so, and also the following week, we will not be doing one as well. So, on, Sunday. on the Sunday, Sunday, so we will be doing that on the Wednesday. The Wednesday, yeah. 
So, um, be prepared for that. And. Um, I don't think there'd be people watching that in the morning. You know, the people going to work, but yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, so. Also, don't forget about the drawing. This is awesome. You want to win this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so check out our Facebook. Facebook.com slash Contagious Min. Min. M I N, not M E N. Whoa. <laughs> wow. um, <laughs> check that out and uh, sign up for that, friends. And, uh, do you have anything today? Hi. Just have a wonderful week and we will see you Wednesday. All right, friends. God bless you. Have a great night.